Hi, how are you? My name is Iris Klasson and I am back with another stupid question. And today I'm going to continue along the same lines as last question and talk about the GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation. And today's question is, does the GDPR require for companies that process personal data that they implement two-factor authentication? Hmm, actually that's a really good question and unfortunately I don't have 100% answers for you today because it really depends on how you interpret what the GDPR says. Now the GDPR says that you have to take appropriate measures and who decides what appropriate is and how do you even decide what appropriate is? The European Union for Network and Information Security, ENSA, has some recommendations and guidelines for that. Now, ENSA is a union that provides guidelines and recommendations for cybersecurity for small, medium and micro-sized enterprise companies. These are companies that have below 250 people or makes less than 50 million euro uh, annual revenue. I hope I remember that correctly. There's something along those lines. And they do have a PDF uh, guidelines in regards to how to manage the security aspects in the GDPR. And what they first of all recommend is that the company does some risk assessment and also takes a look at how likely it is that something happens as well as the severity or the impact if this thing was to happen. And they have different levels of impacts from the lowest one being just mild irritation where the person maybe has to re-enter data or something like that. And something that would be considered a very high impact is if you have irre irreversible damage and that's of course when it comes to personal data usually you will find that the severity the impact can be very high and therefore the security measures are going to be those that will match that sort of impact the likelihood as well as the impact is going to yield what is referred to as the risk level now the risk level is also going to be the guideline for what sort of security measurements you should implement. So let's see if I can explain this a little bit better with the help of a drawing. I talked about ENISA and just to repeat myself, uh, ENISA stands for the European Union Agency for Network and Information Security and this is basically and the Center of Expertise for Cybersecurity in Europe and they provide a lot of guidelines and recommendations for small and medium-sized enterprises, which would basically be around 99% of all businesses in the European Union. So, you know, it's quite likely that your business would be one of those, that they have this specific uh, guidelines and recommendations paper uh, where they provide uh, an assessment system and scoring system that helps you figure out what would be appropriate security measures to comply with the GDPR. So they have GDPR compliant guidelines that I highly recommend that you take a look at. And in these guidelines, uh, they talk a lot about doing a risk assessment. And that is the first thing you would want to do. Now, we need to think about the scope and nature, context, spread, volume and type of data when we do a risk assessment. In the risk assessment itself, you would identify the security threats and the data in question. And then you would score each item in terms of the impact it would have. As well as the probability of occurrence. And those two together is going to yield what we refer to as the risk level. Now, the risk level is color coded with the very the lowest level. The minimum requirements would be considered green. And then you have the in between, which would be yellow. And then the strictest, most rigid security measures would be the ones considered red. And what they recommend is the following, and this is just a, this is just a summary of what they write in that document. So we're going to start off uh, with uh, green here. And as a very basic thing, you would want to avoid having common user accounts. So, you know, if we get the admin, sysadmin and all those typical user accounts, you want to avoid having those. Uh, 
you want there to be a username and password. And the password itself should be complex. So those are considered green measures. Now, if you want to take it to the next level, yellow, the recommendation is that uh, there should be a password policy, it should be defined and documented. And in that password policy, you should again uh, outline what sort of complexity is uh, required for passwords. So having a password policy, and I think this maybe is a little bit difficult to read, so I'm going to move over to using orange instead. So password policy. And then also that all the passwords are stored in hashed form, which I personally would say that there is no other way to store a password. It just becomes ridiculous if you don't actually hash the passwords. A system shouldn't know what a password is, should only know the hash and be able to compare the hashes, but shouldn't be able to retrieve the password itself. And the next level, so if you the impact is very high and or the probability is high and you have to take even more rigid and strict security measures, then you would come on to the red level. And that is where they talk about uh, having two-factor authentication. And if you want to learn more about two-factor authentication, I have a blog post on that stupid question of the day. You can have a read there about two-factor and multi-factor authentication. So two-factor authentication, and if you want to take it even further, you can have device authentication, uh, which is uh, going to be a little bit more difficult and or challenging for certain businesses to implement. So depending on the risk level, that's how you need to decide what would be considered appropriate security measures. And I think that you know, most assessments are probably going to yield that you will land somewhere here. And that means basically would have to implement all this secure, all these security measures here. So there's no definitive answer here. There are just recommendations and guidelines. The fines are very high if these are not followed. And also the consequences. You got to think about the consequences. So it's not just about lost money and lost business. It's also about irreversible damage that might happen. In my case, the company I work for, Construct a Startup, we will be implementing two-factor authentication. That's very important for us. And honestly, today there are so many libraries and so many third-party tools, as well as services that you can use, that there really, really isn't any reason why you shouldn't implement two-factor authentication. Now, if you want to learn more about two-factor authentication and multi-factor authentication, I do have a stupid question in regards to that. Make sure you look it up and have a read. It's a blog post, not a video, unfortunately, but maybe I'll make one for later. Thank you for today and see you soon with another stupid question. Goodbye!